Do you believe in guardian angels? Um, yes, I do actually. No, I do not believe in guardian angels. No, I don't believe in that. I believe in guardian angels. Uh, no, I don't believe in guardian angels. Uh, so obviously I don't think I have one. I do not believe in guardian angels. Well, guardian angels, like, we don't know. Who knows, right? I've yet to see one. I've yet to see a sign of any of them, but I, I do believe something's watching over us. Yeah, I do believe in guardian angels. I have one. I do believe I have one, though. But um, I don't know who she is or he. Um, yes, and I named one. I, I, mine's name is like Pablo or something like that. Yes, I believe in them, and I do think I have them sometimes. Like if I'm in a bad situation, then sometimes like I think they're there and help me out. Yeah, I do believe in guardian angels. Two of my friends um, on the drive down here got into a car accident, and one of them wasn't wearing a seatbelt, but uh, they made it out okay. Guardian angels, I feel like guards you where you have to go. You know, give you advice and help you out whenever you, you know you need help. Have you ever struggled with something or faced a dilemma and thought, if only someone could help me out here? Maybe you have a friend or family member who is able to help you out. We have other special helpers in our lives, even beyond our friends and family here on Earth. They are our heavenly helpers, and they are just a prayer away. The angels and the saints are heavenly helpers. That's what we'll be talking about today. Hi, everyone. I'm Kira. And I'm Matt. And, and this, this is, is Real Faith, Faith TV. TV. Our spotlight guest today is Jen, who will discuss with us how angels and saints impact us here on Earth. We'll talk with her in a few minutes, as well as meet our studio guest. But first, let's go back to the teens on the street, where we asked them, what do you think angels do? And let's hear what they had to say. What do you think angels do? Protect you, guide you. I think they kind of hang up in heaven and chill with God. I think they protect you from any kind of danger around you. I think the guardian angels are the ones that make you feel like safe to protect you and look out for you. I think they protect us. They would probably watch over us. I think uh, they can watch over us and they can uh, warn us in some way. There's signs of hope, I guess. Give people miracles and help people out throughout their life. They guide you, you know, to where you have to go and what do you have to do. They protect you. I've had some close calls. Um, there are certain instances where you can um, feel that you have a guardian angel and that they're there to help. I think angels are like a guidance. Like, they will guide you to do the good things that the Lord wants you to do. I think angels could, um, you know, help us make better choices. I guess they gave a good word for you to God. Maybe they help me out. Maybe there is a guardian angel I have. I just don't know. An angel can show us using signs. They can reach you in your dreams or in signs in everyday life. I think they can give you signs to tell you which way to go in life. Well, they guide you into believing into your faith, and if you believe in them, then that means you believe in God. I believe that they would teach us the right way. The Catechism states, from its beginning until death, human life is surrounded by their watchful care and intercession. Beside each believer stands an angel as a protector and shepherd leading him to life. I believe in them and it helps me to open my eyes and see the signs from God because angels are the messengers of God. Yeah, it like makes you more aware of what's around you and how God really is everywhere. Yeah. Well, let's see what our studio guests have to say on this topic. Okay, they are Kalechi, Bill, Mary, Jimmy, Nick, Lauren, and Annie. So are angels present or real to you guys? And do you believe everyone has a guardian angel? I would say we definitely all have angels, but it's important to remember that angels are purely spiritual beings and to not confuse them with uh, when we have uh, people on earth who pass away and we might confuse them thinking that they're angels and they have angelic power when they really act on a saintly level because they came from earth and they're bodily and spiritual. My grandma, she always told me that like angels are a way of getting closer to God and like when I was little she always like taught me about like angels and saints and stuff and recently my grandmother just moved to Puerto Rico so before she left she gave me this little medal of like a guardian angel and I keep it with me in my wallet and it just reminds me that I'm never alone, that the angels are always with me. Yeah, something similar happened with me and my grandma. Um, she had this picture of two small children walking over a river and then this angel got watching over them. And it's in my room now and when I was younger it didn't mean much, but as I grew older I was like, I started thinking about it, I started pondering and I was like, wow, there really are saints, uh, angels guarding over us. 
And that picture just helps me to remind me that they're always there watching us. Yeah, I learned about angels when I was in kindergarten, and my teacher told us that like they're spiritual beings that always had her back. And I thought that was really cool because like God sent a messenger for us to have her back. You know, I pray to my guardian angel like almost every night. I ask them to help guide me and to pray to God to help to guide me. A lot of times, like when you like have hard times and you, and you feel like you want to give up, you always get that feeling that like you get pushed to like. Go, keep going, and that's a real sign that guardian angels are with you. I've always believed in them, but like, especially with help from other people, like I learned more about what angels really are and what like what they do for you. Like I know they they guide you and protect you, and they lead you in the right direction. I I think they're always like looking out for you and always watching you, like no matter like what's going on. Angels are intermediaries. Messengers are couriers of God's good news to humans. In the Bible, angelic messengers visited Jacob. Moses, David, Elijah, Job, Elizabeth, and many others. It was the angel Gabriel who came to Mary to deliver the news that she would bear the light of the world, Jesus. Next, our spotlight guest Jen talks to us about who and what angels are. And how they serve and glorify God while helping us to live holy lives. They are a, a spiritual being who, who worships God and is also capable of being there with and for us. A lot of times what we don't see is so much more real than what we do see. If you think about it, the things that are invisible, love, friendship, faith, our souls, God the Father, um, angels, all these spiritual entities and, and just all these things that are so very, very real. Heaven we haven't seen yet. Even if we can't always see our guardian angel, that doesn't mean that they're not always there. And there's that, that image of, you might have seen it with the angel with his hand behind a little girl and boy helping him cross a bridge. And I kind of think of those angels helping you along, being your protector, watching out for you. I think we can all think of times in our life when, you know, if we had just been an inch closer, we would have really gotten hurt or we, or we just missed an accident or we miraculously were able to, to wake up and, and be somewhere on time when, when we had forgotten to set an alarm. Also, we have some great examples in scripture. We have St. Michael the Archangel, who is a warrior angel. And the prayer to St. Michael the Archangel is something that has become more and more near and dear to my heart. What we often don't realize is that there's a battle going on for our souls every single day, whether or not we see it. There's angels, there's also demons fighting to take us away from the God who loves us so much and wants us to be with him. Recently I was reading Tobit and in there we meet the angel Raphael and he's just kind of helping the main character Tobiah along, expelling a demon, normal things, healing, answering prayers, run in the middle things for, for an angel. So we see him as, as a protector but also a healer. In that book, Raphael also talks about interceding. He, he says to um, Tobit, when, when you were praying, I was the one who read your petitions before God. And of course, there's good old Gabriel, the messenger to Mary. There we see the role of angels as proclaiming the message, proclaiming good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. So they're, they're constantly serving God, constantly glorifying Him, being there for us and helping us to live a holy life. Just like us, they, they have an intellect, they have free will. And so the angels are constantly adoring God, but they make that choice. On, on the flip side, we have Satan and the other angels who chose to rebel, who made that, that conscious choice not to live in the glory and the presence of God. The Catholic Catechism states, as purely spiritual creatures, angels have intelligence and will. They are personal and immortal creatures, surpassing in perfection all visible creatures, as the splendor of their glory bears witness. St. Augustine has explained that angel is a job, a duty, an office, a privileged role God grants carefully to the angels. Many believe angels guard humans with a divine power to help. In what way do angels help you or, and assure you of God's guidance? Well, I think that God sends the angels like with a message. We talked in a previous show that when the angel Gabriel came to the, to the Blessed Mother, he told her not to be afraid and he the angels have messages for us and we have to be aware that those are the words that are coming directly from God. And even in the spotlight with Jen, the wind chimes went in the background and that was just like a little sign for me that the angels really are everywhere, that the wind chime went off as we're talking about angels. Like Jen mentioned in the video with uh, angels really guiding and protecting us, that uh, it, for me, I just feel like uh, when there are situations that come up that are like that and I end up making the right choice in the situation, I truly do feel that there is someone or something like an angel influencing uh, that decision so that I'm open to 
uh, God's gifts and graces. I've been through a lot of close calls, and I think it's my guardian angel that really protected me. And I try to look for signs and I pray just to like have the spiritual feeling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and for me, when it comes to angels, I feel like they're like a second conscious. Like you have your own personal conscious, but then the angels are right there telling you, hey, watch out, like don't make the wrong decision. Like it's kind of like a reassurance for me. It's really interesting to see that these, um, uh, to see that angels are present in these times. Yeah, I like to think like angels are always with me and they're watching over me. They're our protectors. But I also have to remember that, you know, aside from angels, we have other heavenly helpers we call saints. While some of our great cities, universities, and churches contain the names of some of the more famous saints, is it always easy to understand who they are? What is your definition of a saint? That's what we asked the teens on the street. Let's check it out. My definition of a saint is someone that does everything for others. I believe a saint is somebody who does no sins. Not selfish. Somebody who goes to church maybe like every Sunday. Saints could be any person if they're willing to like do things for other people. My definition of a saint is someone who would do whatever it takes to protect his friends, his family, the ones he loves. Someone that gives up uh, everything they have for one cause. Saint's definitely a person that does good things. Someone that takes the Lord to be their savior and that believes in the Lord full out. A saint is someone that does amazingly good deeds, but they aren't the perfect person. But in general, they're a good person. I think a lot of people would define a saint as something you learn in like CCD class or something through a church, but I think saints can be um, someone who's not necessarily defined by the church, and it can be anyone really. I think a saint would be someone that you love that's close to you as you can look up to. Name a favorite saint or name someone who you consider to be saintly. I don't have a Mother Teresa, that's about it. Mother Teresa? The Virgin Mary. And my favorite saint would be Saint Stephen, only because it's my name. Saint Michael, because of um, my name, my, my name is Michael. But I think um, there's a bunch of different people who could be could be saints. I believe my grandma personally is a genuine, genuinely good person. Uh, my stepdad. He's been there for me since I was like eight years old and he's a great person. I love him a lot. M probably my mother. Uh, definitely my old next door neighbor, Crystal. <laughs> she was like really big with Bibles, taught me a lot about, about God and everything. My sister, because she's always helping people. I believe my dead sister is a saint because she died without doing any sins at a young age. My grandma, because she's always there for me. She's always at church and she definitely loves the Lord. As Catholics, saints are the deceased heroes of our faith we believe are with God in heaven. A saint is a person who lived a good life and died in perfect union with God and went directly to heaven after judgment. Let's go back to our spotlight guest Jen where she'll talk with us about the Holy Communion of Saints. And how we're all called to be saints during our time here on earth. Well, the Holy Communion of Saints really refers to all of us who are united to Jesus Christ. Some of us are still pilgrims walking along on our journey on earth. It's, there's, of course, the souls in purgatory whom we can help by our prayers. And then there are all the saints who are already in heaven, already adoring God face to face, and helping us by their prayers. So the Communion of Saints really refers to everyone in the body of Christ. For me, I think one of the most powerful ways in which we can experience that on this earth is through the Eucharist, through that communion with the body and blood of Christ. When I'm up at college and I'm away from my family, every time you receive that Eucharist, you are united with every single person who is united with you in Christ. And it's just so, so beautiful. We're all called to be saints. Whether or not we, we look what you would expect a typical saint to look like, we really are called to be holy. And you know, the saints were not perfect. They were human, just like you and me. When they did fail, when they did fall into sin, they trusted in God's mercy and trusted in Him to, to sanctify them and, and to pull them up again and give them a fresh start. So I think a lot of us really are living in, in the midst of saints and just sometimes we because we aren't looking at them with the eyes of God, we don't even realize the, the beautiful people that are around us. The saints just really inspire us to, to live for God and they show us what it means to, to die to yourself in a very real way. I mean, they're the saints who were martyrs. They, they challenge us to, to be prepared to die for our faith. For those who maybe weren't killed for the faith, but really died to themselves, to, to their old way of life in a little way every day, they inspire us that way. Next, we asked the teens on the street if they ever pray to the saints. And if they believe prayer to the saints can help with life on earth. 
Do you ever pray to the saints? Do you believe saints are intercessors to God with prayers? If you pray, and uh, I, I guess uh, someone's bound to hear it. No, I do not pray to the saints. I do not pray to saints, but I think that they talk to him, if that's what you mean by intercessing. <laughs> kind of like, are they God's middlemen? Yes. I don't ever pray to saints, like I pray to God. Uh, kind of go directly to him, don't need a middleman. No, I usually just pray to God. Just like pray to God. I believe that to pray, like you would have to pray to God to actually let it get through instead of praying to a saint. When it comes to prayer for me, I would pray to, to Jesus or God as opposed to a saint, but I, I, I feel that certain people can pray to saints in, in order to get through to God. A lot of teens on the street said that they didn't pray with the saints at all, but I feel like I pray with them and through the saints a lot because they're the closest people to God. So if I pray with them and through them, hopefully they'll help me get closer to God. Exactly. As Catholics, we believe that through intercessory prayer, the saints can help humans on earth. And can speed up the waiting time of a soul in purgatory after death and before it reaches heaven. Catholics look up to the saints as people who have lived exemplary lives as teachers or scholars. And who by example show all the faithful how to live in love as God intended all humans to do. So who are some of the saints you look to and perhaps ask for intercession? And who are some people you regard as living saints? My mother and father because they really have helped me through my life to get through a lot of things and have convinced me to do things that have really made me like happy. You really want to take advantage of praying through the saints to God because it's a huge battle out there going on with the devil and it, there, it, you want those reinforcements to help you out. So I know when it comes to my purity I like to pray to Saint Joseph uh, just as being a chaste spouse to Mary and really just an example of uh, practicing his chastity and it, the same thing with Saint Maria Goretti as uh, just how strong-willed she was in her purity to the point of her death. Some people misunderstand praying to saints and praying with saints. People think that when we pray to saints we're worshiping them, but really when we pray to saints we're asking them to pray to God for us, to go to God and offer our, our um, intentions. I know one of the saints that I look up to is a Blessed Mother because she really was an exceptional person. You know, she really was able to serve God and be pure and humble and obedient. And that's something, some qualities that I look forward to, to be able to serve God and just be pure so I could become closer to God. In last school year, our class, my class and I went to a retreat um, at St. Catherine Drex Drexel's um, convent and tomb. And I learned that she, she was so rich, but she gave up everything to um, make schools for the underprivileged kids. kids. Then went to her tomb and I prayed. I gave all my sorrows to her and I truly believe that she gave it to God and I'm like, I'm a better person. Yeah, when I think of saints, I think of um, St. Teresa because she did so many things and everything she did, she did for God. So I look up to that. I know I pray with St. Lucy partially because I chose her for my um, confirmation name. Um, I really admire her and what she did in her life. So I really look up to her. People I have here on earth that I consider my living saints are like my youth minister because she really like encourages us all to be better people, especially in God and to follow God's footsteps. She always encourages us to be the best that we can be. And I know my Aunt Jerry, she, like, she's just such an admirable person. She looks out for me. I feel like she follows in God's footsteps and she like, you know, guides me and protects me in all my ways. Next, Jen talks to us about why we should look to saints for their intercession. And how saints are really models of prayer. One of the things that I was having a problem with before I really fell in love with the Catholic Church was the whole communion of saints. A lot of people say, oh, you know, why, why do you need to pray to, to a saint? Why can't you just go directly to Jesus? I guess one of the best ways it was explained was that we all ask each other to intercede for us. It's, it's an, a normal part of your Christian life and we should pray for one another and build each other up. We might do a novena or, or a litany. We're not saying, you are God. We're saying, please pray for me, <laughs> you know? Really what it is is just asking, can you intercede for me? And acknowledging that our, our soul does continue to exist after death. And if you were united with me in Christ on earth, you're still united with me in Christ after you die. I love litanies. One of my favorite ones is set to music by Matt Marr, one of my favorite Catholic singers. Novenas are great too. So there's just so many novenas that are really near and dear to people's hearts. And the rosary, I mean, asking St. Mary, our mother Mary, to 
to pray for us. I mean, we, we could do a whole episode on the rosary alone. Some of the main ways have been just helping to set my heart on fire with love for God through their example and through their writings especially, but also providing me a way to connect to God in in the communion of saints. Um, and it's, it's so neat because since we have different patron saints and, and different feast days and different things that are associated with, we can be so specific. I mean, you can look for the patron saint of, of studying or find someone who you connect to on some level. I mean, maybe there's a, a saint whose feast day you were born on. Maybe um, there, there's an interest that you have or something that's close to your heart that there's a, a patron saint of. Maybe there's just a cool story of a saint that you always thought was kind of neat. Learn about them. Um, if they have writings to, to get your hands on, even if it's just a, a couple quotes, and really connect with that saint and see what, what they're speaking to you about your relationship with God. And the saints are, are models of prayer, so I think in, in addition to um, asking them to intercede for us, they also teach us how to pray. You know, any prayer is beautiful to, to God when we're really opening our hearts to Him, but sometimes the saints can just provide for us a great model of that humility and, and that obedience of having our souls really open to the will of God. You know, Jen said the saints really teach us how to pray, but they also, if you look at some of their stories, they really teach us how to live. Because the saints weren't perfect. And people think, oh, the saints, they never sinned, they always did the right thing. That's not really true. A lot of the saints actually lived very rough lives. Some of them lived very sinful lives. But as they grew, they grew closer to God, and they went through these great changes. And we could really learn from that if we really look at their stories. Yeah, that's what I admire about the saints, because like, if I make a mistake, I know I can bounce back and just follow God again. It's not like I'm done forever. Finally, Jen tells us who some of her favorite saints are. Let's hear her now. We all have favorite saints, and it's just neat to, to connect with people and find out which saints have really spoken to their hearts. St. Bernadette, because I was, I was born on her feast day. April 16th. She's always been near and dear to my heart. Um, St. Joan of Arc, my confirmation saint. And then St. Francis. Everybody loves St. Francis. St. Dominic, I'm at a Dominican college right now. I'm so blessed to be surrounded by Dominican friars and sisters. I also love Pope John Paul II, who's going to be a saint. Um, John Paul the Great and um, Mother Teresa, of course. Another one of my favorite, favorite people. He's currently a blessed, but I'm sure he'll hopefully be a saint very, very soon. His name's Pier Giorgio Frassati. He was this wonderful, wonderful layman, probably about my age, in his early 20s, in Italy. He's really looked up to because he's a great example of sanctifying every aspect of your life. He loved his sports, he, he tried in school, really loved his friendships, but just so devoted to, to serving the poor and to, to going to Mass every day and really loving Jesus, especially in the Eucharist. And he would do things like play the game of pool and say, well, if, if you lose, you have to spend an hour in front of the Blessed Sacrament with me. And, and then, of course, he would win and his friend would come along with him. Well, one of my, one of my all-time favorite saints is St. John Vianney. Such a, a beautiful, humble story. I mean, he was, he was studying really hard to be a priest and wasn't doing that great in school. So finally, when he, he was ordained, the bishop said, okay, we'll, we'll put him in this, this little village in France, you know, kind of in the middle of nowhere where he won't do too much harm. And it turned out that he was just an amazing confessor. He would end up spending 18 hours a day in the confessional because God just gave him such a gift for, for hearing confessions. Something I love about him is, is his courage. There was a story that's told where one night St. John Vianney was sleeping and he kind of heard someone come into his room and, and he rolled over and it was Satan and he goes, oh, it's only you. He had that confidence and he knew that he already had the victory in Jesus Christ. I know I have a friend who's part of another kind of church, and he often says to me, well, what makes saints better than other people? What makes them like different from like what we are? And I'm like, well, we're all called to be saints. We're all called to be like those people. We just need to be open to that opportunity. I think it's really interesting how she commented that we are part of the communion of the saints, because when you have a problem, you go to prayer groups, and they help you pray to God. And you know, I also have like a problem. Every time I think of a saint, I think of like the older saints that we see in church, like St. Francis and, you know, St. Thomas and all those. And so now I have to think about like the um, saint, saints to be, like John Paul the Great and Mother Teresa and all. And that makes them more tangible and more relatable to my life. And like Lauren said, we should all strive to be holy like the saints are. Angels and saints can support us in our walk with Jesus. They help to draw us closer to Him and grow deeper in our faith. 
So take the time to read about the saints and be inspired by their courage, their stories, and their relationships with God. And allow your guardian angel to help as you walk the road that will lead us to heaven. How do your heavenly helpers lead you in your journey in faith? We'd love to hear from you. Contact us through our website. The address is www.realfaithtv.com. Or you can call us at 609-406-7402. And we'll leave you today with this final thought. When Jesus was on earth, God sent an angel to help him. In Luke chapter 22, verse 42, Jesus was praying in the garden before the soldiers came to take him away. He said, Father, if you are willing, take this cup away from me. Still not my will, but yours be done. And to strengthen him, an angel from heaven appeared to him. So don't be afraid because God is always with us and he sends heavenly helpers, his angels, to strengthen, guide, and protect us. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Real, Real Faith, Faith TV. TV. God bless.